Next presentation is Integrated Storage Planning Design and Solutions. And with us today is um, Ms. Tracy. Uh, Tracy is a senior accountant, a senior account manager for Datum Filing Systems. She covers 11 states throughout the South Central and Northwest United States. With her excellent product knowledge and dealer relationships, she was instrumental in developing a new line of custom personal lockers for police departments and first responders. She's a graduate of a technical school in York, Pennsylvania. Please help me welcome Ms. Tracy Ryder. Okay, this is actually a certified um, AIA, so I have to stick totally to generics, so later on if we have any questions, um, I can answer them for you. Okay, this is the course number. There's also a sheet out front that you can sign, and we will actually go ahead and submit that for you. Okay, uh, learning object, object, I can't talk today, objectives for this course, um, we're going to discuss product capabilities, the uses and applications, um, with respect to your specific requirements, um, we'll identify product selection, we're going to recognize the advantages and limitations associated with um, the product layout, the configuration and design, um, and we can also identify a range of security and technical applications. Okay, um, exchange of knowledge is key to the growth and vitality of an organization. Much of the office design revolves around this premise. In the ongoing debate between open versus closed offices, the idea of knowledge and information exchange plays a huge role. The inherent design philosophy of the open office concept is that face-to-face -face interaction is encouraged and considered beneficial to the success of a company. This interaction promotes the creation of ideas and exchange of knowledge. While exchange of information verbally is key to the growth and vitality of an organization, so too is the exchange of access of nonverbal information in terms of files and records. Okay. Um, people need information when they need it. Any delay in its retrieval wastes time and increases frustration. The proper design of an office and location of storage solutions to facilitate the growth of information improves the performance of the office staff. It is estimated that more than 80% of the cost to maintain paper records, for instance, is in the personal time used to retrieve and replacing of the documents. Consider one of the case studies that I'm going to show you at the end, where for perceived lack of space, the um, essential files for the customer service department were kept one floor down below the people who actually used it. Time was wasted and work was hampered by not considering the users and the generations of the files. Okay, as far as space efficiency, um, not only does filing affect labor costs, but uh, in insufficient storage of records can quickly reduce the usable space in an office. In fact, recoverable, uh, uh, recovery of usable space is often the top priority in upgrading a storage um, system. In healthcare, archival storage, education, law enforcement, and insurance, where all records must be kept for a period of seven years, the management and storage of this information must be space efficient and accessible. <coughs> Improving the management of data and archival information can be done by selecting and locating the appropriate storage system for the storage function. Selection of appropriate storage systems is accomplished first by the study of how and what type of records are stored and used in an organization. Despite the increase in the use of electronic storage and media, the requirement for storage of paper has not lessened. In fact, the workplace is more productive than ever and more files and copies of files are being generated. Paper still reigns as the storage media of choice. Security requirements and fire resistance should also be considered here. The record type will determine the type of record storage needed. 
Okay, flow of information. The next step in the analysis of the flow of information is to determine the appropriate locations for the equipment and the type of storage equipment required. This includes the record use and its intended users. This is who generates the records, who stores the record, and who uses the record. How often the record is used, access retention, time, and volume. Okay, use of stored materials. The use of record information often depends on the individual user and the work that they do. Many people will store information in a number of ways. Information currently being worked on is stored on a desktop or work surface. Information is needed frequently or soon is stored in a file nearby. And information is used infrequently or shared by a large number of people can be stored further away or in a location central to those who need it. Information also moves between these locations. Uh, the type of record that requires access infrequently or requires access by a large number of people can be placed in a centralized filing location. Centralized filing provides one location for a large number of records. It works well in small organizations or where a number of departments have need for the same files and records. The benefits are reduced. The benefits are reduced time spent searching for files, improved security, simplified maintenance, and elimination of duplicate records. The use of this type of storage is increasingly common as individual workstations become smaller and more, important is placed on, more importance is placed on good information flow. Many office spaces are moving towards smaller individual workspaces and shared workspaces in an effort to reduce square footage. In these cases, filing and storage is minimal and in an individual station and a compact centralized filing area is then going to be used. Decentralized storage. Um, this is the type of record that is used more frequently by one or two individuals and it can be stored in a decentralized filing location. These locations include filing in the workstation or jointly between a few workstations that uh, share the current information. The changes in size to individual workspaces driven by either cost cutting or new ways of working has meant that designs, designers have to take a better look at the function of these spaces and make them, including their storage, more efficient. Okay, cost and efficiency. Um, the final consideration should be the cost of the equipment the cost of the space to place the equipment, and in use. Also, any possible maintenance and repair costs should be estimated. Under maintenance costs, you want to consider whether an organization or a business has the requirement for a flexible floor plan. Change is always inevitable. In order to remain competitive, and when looking at workspace investment, flexibility in furnishings that accommodate organizational changes are cost-effective investments. For instance, a storage system that can operate within a workstation and then be expanded to act as a more centralized storage or easily moved storage system will in the long run um, be more efficient purchases for you. This is just giving you um, a general idea of storage options. Um, you have your stackable or your, your fourth post type shelving. You're going to get uh, 37 uh, lineal filing inches in a square foot, and the cost is going to be two to two fifty per lineal filing inches. So then you have um, it goes down and shows you um, like a four drawer vertical file, um, the whole way down to your rotary type shelving, and it tells you the different costs involved. Now I'll go over um, stackable storage. Um, Stackable shelving, it's a modular open shelf filing solution. And it's going to offer one of the least expensive shelving methods per filing inch and one of the highest filing densities. The shelf design reduces the overall height, allowing for increased capacity. The benefits of this type of shelving is its modularity. Its width range from 24 to 48 inches, making it ideal for both centralized and decentralized filing. It accommodates change in office organizations with its stackable capability 
and individual units used in workspaces can easily be worked into grouped units stacked to a maximum of eight levels high. Okay, um, locking doors, open shelving. Um, it's going to be available with the locking doors for added security or it can remain open shelving for efficient information retrieval. There are a few limits on the sizes and colors available and it can be converted into a track system without the need to dismantle or reconfigure the units. These files accommodate uh, letter, legal, x-ray uh, with fixed or movable dividers. Okay, this is the um, four post type shelving. Um, the four post shelving system is the classic open type shelving that allows uh, for fast retrieval of files. It's generally less expensive than the modular stackable shelving. Um, this type of unit offers ease of installation and it's the most adjustable shelving out there. Um, it's going to be available in your letter, letter legal, archival for your box type storage and also x-ray depths. Um, applications include files, record and bulk storage. Um, this type of shelving, it can come in um, a standard, a medium, or even a heavy duty type um, for any of your industrial applications. The, and they are adjustable on one and a half inch centers. And the upright sizes are gonna be anywhere from, um, you get your 40 to your 64 to your 76, 85, 88, 97, they can go, um, on one and a half inches, the whole way up to 120 inches with extensions. Um, they also can be converted to the track systems that we'll show you a little bit later. Um, they have the adjustable shelves that allow for different configurations and the ability to store a wide variety of items. The widths on these units are gonna be your 24, your 30, 36, 42, and 48 inch wide. The adjustability and versatility, durability and affordability make the four post shelving is the most utilized type of shelving that we have. Okay, unlike the stackable system, adding additional units after the fact requires dismantling and unloading of the original units. Additional units should be specified at the beginning of the project to eliminate the inconvenience of disassembly and reassembly when extra units are needed. The increased price at the initial installation is partially offset by eliminating the hassle of adding units at a later time. Now we're gonna go into the high density mobile and this is just different options for adding the type of shelving that we already went over. Um, mobile storage places the, the storage units on tracks or rails in order to eliminate aisles between the units. These are available in lateral sliding or perpendicular sliding units, also called movable aisle systems. The lateral track system is the less expensive of the two and works well for small to medium sized storage areas with moderate to high activity. These are ideal for um, centralized storage area for a company that requires a degree of flexibility in their floor plans. Okay, lateral tracks, um, it's uh, surface mounted, no permanent attachment. Um, these units, like I said, are surface mounted on the floor. They do not require permanent attachment. Therefore, it's not gonna cause any damage to your flooring. Um, you're gonna wanna check for a durable base for the shelves and smooth uh, rolling wheels to provide quiet use. These tracks can easily expand in both um, depth, the whole way up to what we call a quad slider system or um, you can also add on to them sideways and it's either going to be it's any size unit that fits within the space that you have allotted. Um, these systems can be integrated um, with existing equipment. So if you have existing shelving, as long as you let everybody know the depth, the width, um, we're able to add on to them. It includes your four post, your stackable, and it can also be in conjunction with if you have, say, existing um, lateral type files. That said, the file sizes accommodated include, um, you can do your letter legal x-ray on these. Um, in terms of density of filing, the lateral track systems offer the highest filing density 
of all systems described here at 37.5. Okay, um, going on to the movable aisle system. Uh, at, slow, at a slightly lower LFI at 32, the movable aisle system is ideal for medium to large storage requirements. Shelving units are mounted on rolling carriages, eliminating all but one common access aisle. The tracks for these systems can be either surface mounted for easy relocation or upgraded to existing non-movable storage as they will accommodate many other types of shelving product lines. This, for example, um, was a high school. I know I'm not allowed to go off very far, but um, this is a type where you can put athletic storage, for example. It's not just filing storage. Um, this is an example where we um, used the mobile at 120 inches where the extensions were put on, and it was a warehouse type. But um, these systems are going to be able to store really heavy loads. It um, has been used as storage solutions for uh, professional office, to record storage, to office supplies, to athletic storage, and we even use these for um, when we're doing our weapons storage for the military or the police departments. Okay, these are larger and heavier <coughs> systems, um, like when, for example, you get into the X-ray or depending on what you're storing. For example, some people want to store engine parts, pretty much anything. But when you get into the really heavy type, you may want to go to an electrical system. Um, this here is an example of that. Um, these can also be hardwired, and um, you can, um, they'll be hardwired, and they can also be tied into the fire alarm system. So um, that'll help prevent any damage to your media. Um, this year, we're going to go over the grouted system versus the non-grouted system. Um, when you're investing in a high-density mobile system, it's a big decision that many organizations have to address as their needs for space become paramount. In addition to the initial investment, which may be substantial, um, there's also going to be some hidden cost or savings depending on the construction of the system that you use. The two different types um, of the construction, as we said, are the grouted versus the non-grout system. Um, the, a non-grout system um, that utilizes decking and rails that can actually just sit right on top or they're, they're surface mounted so they're not going to cause any damage to the floor. They're also going to be easier to add on to or move. Um, then of course there's also the grouted which of course you're going to have to grout. Your building shifts, you may have to um, worry about trying how to get that re-leveled. Um, some of the benefits as far as tax benefits, cost benefits. Um, tax benefits because a grout system is attached to the building. The system usually is depreciated over um, the life of the building, so that's typically going to be about 40 years. Where a non-grout system may be depreciated as any other major type of furniture, so you'll be able to write that off probably in about seven years. You will want to check with your tax advisor on that though. Um, Cost benefits, grout systems are typically more labor intensive to install, um, which will increase the price of installation and the overall cost of the system. Leveling capabilities, um, buildings can shift and settle over time. It's going to throw your floors out of level. Uh, a non-grout system can be re-leveled as needed, while a grout system, um, it's going to be really hard to <laughs> adjust that afterwards. Um, expansion grout systems, uh, they may need additional construction to extend, where a non-grout system requires no construction. You're simply going to lay the decking and the rails onto the floor, level it, and then you're going to add your carriages as you go. Uh, removal and relocation. Removal and relocating a non-grout system is easy. Um, the decking and rails can be moved easily without any damage to your floor. They can be placed where the new system is desired. Um, a grout system, the removal may require some demolition, demolition to the floor and relocation requires possible construction to accommodate the new location of the rails in the grout. Um, workplace interruptions, grout systems can create dust um, and increase noise due to drilling which can result in decrease in office productivity. This here is a <coughs> 
excuse me, a rotary type of file, so it spins the whole way around. Um, it can be used from both sides. Um, so it, it will rotate to 360 degrees. Um, it's slightly less in linear storage capacity than a movable aisle system. The LFI for the rotary file is about um, 30.6 LFI, and the filing solution is ideal for small to large systems um, with moderate activity. Um, the side panels of most units are removable. It's going to make them easy to expand as additional uh, space is required, storage is required. Also, these types of units offer a security um, option as the unit can be locked in open or closed positions. This would be um, ideal for decentralized storage with a workspace and can accommodate flexibility of uh, changing floor plans and it's not going to retire, require any permanent attachment to the floors, walls, or anything like that. Um, for situations where file sharing is required between two workspaces, this type of storage is ideal. It's available in varying heights. This unit can also function as a work surface with storage underneath or even as a space divider between two different um, offices. These can be uh, recessed into the wall during construction to create an aesthetic storage system. Uh, rotary files are often placed in the middle or interior of an area of room to create a functional room divider. I warned you this was kind of uh, not exciting. It's, um, it's AIA, but uh, <laughs> okay, it's only a little bit longer. Okay. Um, with this, you're going to want to look for a heavy-duty platform with built-in leveling capability to allow for smooth operation on non-level floors. Okay, media stored in this unit range from letter to legal size. You can also store binders, um, other electronic media um, storage devices. There's a lot of different configurations. Um, you can see the tub drawers on the bottom where you can do top tab. Um, supplies, uh, then we have the little multimedia drawers in the middle, then you also have um, your end tab filing. Um, okay, finishes and metals. For both centralized and more importantly decentralized storage, aesthetics play a role. So considering flexibility of the floor plan when choosing colors or finishes of storage units, um, are these units going to be moved from one office to another? Um, is there a possibility that individual units uh, might be grouped together at some time? Um, steel finishes uh, should be durable and environmentally friendly. Powder coating, which is a solvent-free method of applying a durable, high-impact, heat-and-fade resistant paint, is the method of, um, of choice. Most manufacturers will have a range of standard anodized metallic and non-metallic colors and offer custom match services. Okay, um, wood look colors are often available. Some faces and tops of shelving units can be furnished in wood veneer, laminates, or perforated metals, making these units um, suitable, attractive um, to place anywhere within your office. Sustainability. Okay, um, it's going to be the amount of recycled steel in the product. Ensure no trees are harvested to um, produce the particle board. Um, this is something else that you're going to, it's another major, major design choice in the applicability of the product to lead requirements and the environmental responsibility of the manufacturer. The LEED Green Building Rating System is the nationally accepted benchmark for the design, construction, and operation of high-performance green buildings. When considering the environmental responsibility of a company and the choice of storage, look for some of the following. You want to look for the amount of recycled steel in the product. This can range up to 80% for some manufacturers. Look for third-party certification of the products. Some manufacturers use products, for instance, steel and chemicals in manufacturing um, that can be recycled. Um, we're not really supposed to show our name, but um, this is some of the different material and resources that you can use in order to get your points. Um, as far as 
you have your indoor, well, you guys read this more than make, <laughs> me reading it to you, but um, material and resources, um, you can get one to two points for that. Then you're also, um, I don't really have a sheet on this, it's kind of just the reading and the different amount of points that we can get. This here's another type, um, it's called the tamper door. This is going back more into protecting your files. Um, I don't know, HIPAA was kind of really big, then it wasn't, but this is a type of a solution for that. It can be used pretty much on any type of the filing systems. As far as the poor four post, it can be used on um, a thin stack. It kind of looks pretty much like a garage door almost that sits on top. It's so adds about nine inches to your overall height. Um, that's one type of solution. Then you also have your um, lockable shelving units, which is another type that you can use. Um, these units are actually available with gang locking or retractable doors allowing for secure media storage. Um, there's also the rotary action file which we showed which was the unit that spun the 360 degrees and um, we have the movable aisle system which was the, the mobile track or else the slider systems they can also be used. Okay we're also going to be looking at the CPU and server locker um, for secure storage of computers and CPUs. Um, this one here um, is going to deny access to the CD, the CD drives and the USB ports. They sit in the locker on a slide out tray which allows accessibility um, for the maintenance departments. Then you also have your laptop security lockers. These uh, secure storage of laptops can be achieved by using either a locker or a storage vault. Um, with either of these options, confidential information is more secure than with a cable lock because lockers and vaults prevent access to the computer as well as vandalism. These here are um, laptop carts. They're also, um, you can use them for netbooks, you can use them for iPads, Kindles. Um, the laptop CART provides a safe and easy way to transport and store numerous laptops and provides a secure environment to store and charge the laptops and other peripherals while still remaining mobile. They have reinforced timber doors that accommodate a padlock or combination lock and three-point locking rear access panel with limited access to electrical components and timers so IT configurations remain secure. You're going to want to look for movable dividers for flexibility. Um, and you're also going to want to look for electrical safety features that will not allow the circuit charging the laptops to be overloaded. Okay, this is an example. That was the A, the AIA, so we're pretty much done with that. So this will be a little bit more free speaking and hopefully um, this here is just going to show you um, like a case study. For example, this was an attorney's office. Um, They've been doing, they've been, they're in York County, they've been in business since 1903. Um, so anyway, what they wanted to use, um, they chose to use four post shelving with lateral track system in a centralized filing area. And what that did is they managed to reduce the amount of filing space that they were using by 45%. So that um, they were able to f free up more space for, um, for their employees to sit, break rooms, um, if they want to add on. Um, this here um, for archival and office storage. This was um, a company in Ohio. They were planning to con um, consolidate their individual fire file collections into a joint filing room in a newly constructed municipal building. Um, so what we were able to do here, it was three different offices that were coming together. They all had individual types of filing needs. So some had the top tab files. So what we were able to do is we were able to put those in drawers. Um, what this did for them is um, it saved them money and it also saved them a lot of space and allowed the three departments to come together in one building, which saved, um, saved them a lot of money, the county. This here is um, archival storage. Um, in Pennsylvania, the York Archives, they were taking all of their information out of the courthouse and putting it into a new storage vault. Um, 
so what we did is we created a, um, a movable aisle system for them. We used the four post shelving, um, which gave them the flexibility to store the multiple types of media within a single system. Um, although some of the 60 plus carriages that we used for this system, they were over 30 feet long, we were still able to just use the mobile. And what that requires, even as though that system's 30 foot long, it only requires one pound of force to be able to turn the entire system. Um, this here was a new high school that was being built and um, they were worried about not having um, enough room for the students to be able to look at the, the information as they got it out of the library. So by creating this system, what it did is it, um, sorry, I'm just trying to, to read any special notes on there. But what it did is it ended up saving them a lot of money. They actually were able to put two workstations in there for the students to work at. And being that it was a brand new school, we had the 19 different colors that they could use, plus we could also use um, the custom laminates that they wanted to match the rest of the, the building. This one here was a, um, a country club. And what they needed to do is they wanted to be able to have some money to purchase some new carts. They also um, wanted to be able to store um, all the members' golf clubs. So what they did is they put them on a mobile track system and they bought a couple more carts out of that and they also um, were able to park them inside the building. This one here is an example um, of that one I told you about earlier in the AIA where they actually had all their filing in a s actual, the story below where the, the people were actually using it. So it wasted so much time. So by putting it into um, the buy slider and the try slider, they were actually able to move all the records up and put them on the same floor as the people that were using them. And I can answer, um, I was told to try and go slow, so, <laughs> but I know everybody's getting a little bored, so I kind of speeded it up a little there at the end. Um, there's a lot of different types of products that you can do on these systems. Um, they're kind of in that booklet, which is a little more interesting than the AIA presentation. Does anybody have questions on anything? <laughs>